Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's hot take in our newly redesigned podcast studio. I hope you like it. Uh, today we're going to ta- be talking about home prices and inflation. Now you might have heard that new home prices are way down, but is that really the case? And what does that mean for our economy? Uh, we'll round out today's show with a weekly market recap. That much and more on this week's hot take. So first of all, let's get some facts straight. Uh, New home prices are indeed down, but only if you look at the average or the median price of homes sold each month. So that's really like judging the entire restaurant industry just by tasting one dish at one restaurant. It doesn't really truly tell the whole story about the housing market right now. So here's why uh, new homes are only a tiny fraction of all the houses out there. Um, We're talking about uh, 0.4% of the total housing stock. And guess what? Those new homes are being sold. uh, The new homes being sold now are smaller and cheaper than the ones sold a year ago. Uh, That's because people are are truly worried about uh, higher mortgage rates and the builders are adjusting accordingly. So since they don't need to, you know, really plan that far ahead, they've got a lot of different uh, architectural plans uh, in their arsenal to be able to deploy. Uh, They don't necessarily need to build up to what they are expecting to. They're trying to accommodate the current sales market in order to turn houses this year instead of next. So what if we want a better picture of what's happening with home prices? We need to look at some different gauges. Now, one that a lot of you may have heard of is called the Case-Shiller Index, uh, and uh, one that is a little less common, the FHFA Index. Those track the prices of the same homes over time and adjust for quality. Uh, These these, uh, different indexes tell a different story. Home prices are actually up in the past year, not down. So there's really no deflation there when you're comparing apples to apples using the indexes. Now let's talk about inflation. You might hear that inflation is falling, but that just means that it's not rising as fast as it used to. So prices are still going up, they're just going up a bit slower. Think of it uh, like a roller coaster slowing down at the end of the ride and not coming to a complete stop. So uh, when we see a reduction of inflation month over month of you know 8% to 7%, inflation is still going up at 7%, but it's not going up at 8%, which is worse. So that's that's sort of the explanation there. And here's the kicker. Even though the money supply is shrinking, it's still way higher than it was before the pandemic. That's like having a a ton of dough left over after making a giant pizza. You can't just put it back in the fridge and and wait months and months or years. It'll all go bad. So the economy will keep digesting all that extra money to keep prices from actually falling. So what's the bottom line? Monetary policy is tight enough to bring inflation down, but not tight enough to cause deflation. And while we might see prices dip here and there, especially for things like energy, the overall trend is still upward. The future, however, is a bit more interesting. Uh, The market is predicting interest rate cuts, which could eventually lead to another inflation surge, kind of like a flashback to the 1970s. But that's a story really to dive into and unpack in another day. But I wanted to tease it a little bit. The market is predicting the interest rate cuts, not the Fed. So in the Fed meeting uh, last week, week before, uh, they, they didn't indicate that they were going to lower rates, but the markets have come out and kind of said that they believe that they're going to lower rates. Uh, this is evidence of a deeper divide between what the Fed is saying and what the market is willing to accept. So like never before, the markets are ignoring the Fed's propaganda and looking critically at the facts, right? But for now, uh, let's remember that one statistic doesn't always tell the whole story. We've got to dig deeper and look at different perspectives before we jump to conclusions. And hey, that's what this podcast is truly all about, bringing you the nuance and complexity of the economy one episode at a time. Now for our market summary for last week. It's been a mixed bag with some data points up and others down. So here's a quick rundown for you for what happened last week. So we did discuss a lot already in this podcast about housing. Um, Housing new home sales took a tumble, likely due to the high mortgage rates above 7.5%. But don't panic. Real GDP actually grew faster than expected thanks to business investment and government spending. So housing is just a small part of the larger uh, macroeconomic picture. Uh, For consumers, uh, the consumer side of the economic argument, incomes and spending both edged up slightly but the pace is slowing down. 
So maybe consumers on an individual level are saving uh, their money for the holidays, haven't quite gotten out to the malls yet or online to spend their increase in salaries. Now, it's hard to tell yet, but it's data that we're going to be watching closely as the holiday shopping season continues to evolve now and through the end of the year. Manufacturing still in a slump with the ISM index missing expectations once again. Now, this is a big deal. It's 13 months in a row of contraction in manufacturing, the longest that we've seen since the early 2000s. So yikes, to say the least. Now onto the markets. Uh, despite mixed data, stocks enjoyed their fifth straight weeks or <laughs> stocks enjoyed their fifth straight week of gains last week. Investors seem optimistic, especially about small and mid caps. So this was evidenced with the Russell 2000, which was up about 13%. Uh, through the month of November. So Russell doing very, very well. And, and just a reminder, the Russell 2000 is a great indicator of small cap, uh, of the small cap index. Uh, real estate materials and uh, industrials continue to be uh, very, very well, uh, performing very, very well. And our big performer last week was Salesforce and Meta. So Meta, the social media company is suing the Federal Trade Commission, causing its stock to dip. Uh, sounds like a legal battle is brewing there, but even with the slump last week, it was a drop in the bucket compared to their 150% increase on their stock price this year, which uh, got Zuckerberg actually to sell his first shares of Meta in uh, two years. So uh, an incredible year that they've been having as well, and, and Mark Zuckerberg being uh, a big beneficiary of that. So. so looking ahead, we'll be watching for more signs of economic growth and corporate profits. Remember, even with uh, the recent upswing, volatility is always a possibility. So buckle up and stay tuned next week and the weeks following. So that's it for this week. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe for more compelling content from me and our fearless leader, Scott Merrick. Uh, check out our merch page to uh, cross some of those people off of your Christmas list and share, share, share. So if you found this information compelling or helpful at all, uh, please share it with one, two, ten of your friends and we would really appreciate it here. That's the biggest support that you can give us right now. So uh, thank you for watching. And as always, this is not constitute financial advice, so please be sure to consult a professional before making any financial decisions. All right, everybody, Chris Barker signing off this week. Uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.